go for it. Yeah, I Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, folks. God is good. All the time. All the time. God is good. Amen. Does that sound a little loud? A little bit. Okay. Cut <laughs> it down a little bit. <laughs> we are blessed with another beautiful morning. Amen. 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 And if you have new folks watching us on my stream this morning, welcome to Thermite United Methodist Church. I'm Pastor Cash. And I'm glad you're joining us to worship our Lord and Savior this morning. Uh, and again, if you're new to the church, uh, we're a Bible-based church. 10% of all the money that comes in goes to missions. And if you'd like to send in a check, our address is 13880. 13880 Long Road, Thermont, Maryland, 21788. And the offering basket today is back there with Nancy, right? Okay, thank you, Nancy. Does anybody have an announcement this morning? See. So, what's coming up on September 26th? Retreat. 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 And all of you have surely signed up for it already, right? Yep. Yeah. All right, so those of you who are too bashful to raise your hand and say, no, I didn't. Miss Nancy's got the sign up sheet back there and is going around. We need you to sign up because you don't want to miss out on the fried chicken and the pulled pork and the mac and cheese and potato salad and coleslaw and brownies and cookies for dessert. If that hasn't broke the Methodist in, I don't know what will. So I'm hoping all of you, what's the matter, Shirley? You don't like that? <laughs> I learned that from Shirley. I didn't get some time. <laughs> So, Shirley says you got to show up September 26, 9 to 3. All right? Thank you. Oh, thank you. So, make sure that's on your calendar. September 26. It's the last Saturday of this month. And we start at 9 a.m. and we're planning to be done at 3 p.m. So, Nancy has a pendant sheet. And if you don't sign up, like Steve said, you're going to have to deal with Shirley. Whoa. <laughs> I'd be signing up if I were you. <laughs> but please sign up. Shirley, do you have something? Yeah, I'm not sure how I got this reputation. But, uh, <laughs> well, that term might have something to do with it. Yeah, okay. So since, since I'm so influential, uh, <laughs> um, the recipes are collected. They're they're typed. Uh, we're making the final decisions on that today, and hopefully we will have the cookbooks back um, in time for Christmas. And the other thing is that we are doing the um, Morse code bracelets on Thursday evening at 6.30 here, so if you're planning on being here, I need you to be in touch with me. Thank you, Shirley. Yep. Two yes, things. Stuff. Youth group tonight, six o'clock like normal. And those of you who need fourth day training in Emmaus, Thursday, six thirty here at the church. Okay, so youth group tonight at six and Emmaus on Thursday, six thirty at the church. Thursday, Thursday six thirty here at the pavilion. Okay. Actually we'll probably do it inside. Okay. The fourth day. The Thursday. Okay. Thank you. Other housekeeping things also, I want to mention that there's an SPRC meeting tomorrow at 6, and a trustee meeting tomorrow at 7. Yes, Tim. Yeah, I just wanted to announce that uh, I'm going to start my Sunday school class back up on the 27th of September. Uh, and we're going to do it here in the pavilion, uh, social distance as best we can. Uh, we'll have it out here until, for a couple weeks anyway, it'll cold the weather, and then we'll move inside somewhere. But, uh, we're going to study a study called Meeting God. It's a 12-week study. It's 100% biblically based, and uh, it's a you know a lot of times we concentrate on our religion and our how what we believe about God, but we're going to learn what the Bible has to say about God, and we're going to learn, get to know the person God. 
that's what that study is a 12 week study, and after that, we're going to do a 12 week study on uh, meeting the Spirit, meeting the Holy Spirit. And so, uh, if, you, if you're in my class, we're starting back up. If you're not and you're looking for a Sunday school class, we'll be out here at 27, 9 o'clock. Okay, so that starts at 27th, 9 o'clock here in this space. Yes. Okay, thank you, Tim. Speaking of Sunday school classes and Bible studies, our Wednesday night Bible study is going on, uh, I think, extremely well. And you're still invited. I have two. Nancy's holding one up now. There are two um, workbooks that do not have a name. So if you'd like to claim them, they are yours. Every Wednesday at 7 p.m. We're going to start the book of Colossians this Wednesday. Anybody else? How about joys or testimonies? Does anybody have a joy or a testimony this morning? Pete? Yeah, I'd like to share something with everybody. I don't know. How many of you guys follow the Duck Dynasty guy? Something. Right. Yeah, something. And you know they have a podcast called Unashamed. Right? Some of you guys know that. Don't know that, you will now. It's on YouTube. <laughs> just, just YouTube Unashamed. They have done 130 some episodes. They're about 50 minutes a piece, and they're working through various books of the Bible. And it, you know, it's just doing a podcast talking about God and, and teaching faith. What I wanted to share with you this morning is recently, for a, a reason they can't understand and explain, hundreds of people are coming to them, driving from New York and Michigan and all over the country, to them to be converted and baptized. They're running four baptisms at a time throughout the week because so many people are coming. The point I want to make is we have a need out there. There's a need, a hole that's being filled. People want to come to God, and they're finding God as the hole filler. And I just wanted to mention that to you because we got them right out here. We just need to reach out to people and let them know <coughs> about the good news of Jesus Christ. And we can bring them in here. There is a need, and the things that are going on in the country right now, People are hungry for this. So I wanted to share this. If some guys with some long hair, beards, and sunglasses can do it, by gosh, we can do it here in Christ. <laughs> Thank you, Steve. <laughs> yes, Jim. Uh, Steve has challenged us to uh, go out and kind of bring the word and step out of our comfort zone. And... Uh, and I've been listening to Steve. Well, anyway, last Monday on Memorial Day, uh, my next door neighbor, uh, my next door neighbors are a, a, a grandmother and her sister and two of her grandchildren. And in the last four years, her husband has passed away and her son, the father of the two children there, has passed away. So it's just the four of them now. An aunt the grandmother and two kids. And the two kids are a 20-year-old girl and a 21-year-old boy. And since the father has passed, I've been doing a little bit of mentorship with the young man. He's a fine young man, and I've taken him hunting in a couple things, and, and he comes over, and we talk on occasion. But it's a, it's a God-based family. And I think the two kids are, are questioning the direction they want to go in. And uh, so anyway... So the young man's name is Jordan, and I've taken him out a couple of times in, in the boat to the lake and done a little fishing and stuff like that. So I called him early Monday morning because I found out my wife was going to work and she couldn't go up to the lake. So I called Jordan and asked him if he wanted to go fishing. And he said, no. He said, you know, Mr. Jim, I can't. He said, i got a little part-time job, and, and I'm uh, going out and doing some stuff and trying to make a little extra money. I said, well, that's fine. You know, go by himself. He said, well, why don't you ask Brianne? his 20-year-old sister. And I said, well, I never really thought about it, you know. I mean, I don't know how appropriate that would be. And so anyway, so he said, oh, no, she, she'd love to go. So I called the daughter, and I said, Brian, you know, and I, I see the kids all the time. We holler and stuff back and forth. And I said, you know, this is Jim. I said, 
Jordan can't go on the little boat. Would you like to go? And she said, well, let me ask Grandma. And she went. And it turned out that we had the opportunity to talk pretty in depth on the water with the little trolling motor going uh, about faith. And a little of my testimony and where I was years ago and the direction she's taking and, you know, talking, talking about moral conduct and things like that and it was it was good it was healthy and uh, hopefully um, hopefully she'll course her life in a, in a solid direction and start hopefully asking grandma a lot of questions but anyway I had the opportunity and it was there and so it was good it was good Amen. Well, thank you for your testimony yeah that's what we all need to be doing Jim was planting seeds, and I had an opportunity last Sunday after church. Um, I went golfing with one of my friends, like on the spur of the moment, and uh, we're coming back from golfing, and he's he's like he's like I I really trust you as a good friend. He says I want to share something with you, and he starts sharing about his relationship. Um, it hasn't been going very well, and things like that. He goes, I'm just looking for peace, you know, and it's like, ding, ding, you know, so um, I was able to share, you know, how Jesus gives me peace, and I shared that with him, you know, so that's the only peace that you're ever, complete peace that you're ever going to know, and I said, if you can get that through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, and just share with, share with him and everything, it was just an opportunity that the Lord gave me to share, and I want to just praise him for that, and, and hopefully I plant some seeds you know, to build a relationship with him even stronger and also plant some seeds that Jesus is the way and, you know, hopefully that he can turn to Jesus sometime. Awesome. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Jim. That's what we all need to be doing is planting those seeds. Thank you. Today happens to be a special day on my calendar. Today is Grandparents' Day. Am I right? Is it Grandparents' Day? Do we have any grandparents here this morning? Raise your hand. <laughs> There's a few. There's a few. Okay. We need to celebrate. Let's give the grandparents a hand. <laughs> grandparents are important. I was uh, I spent a lot of time with my grandparents growing up, and um, they're an important part of the family. So it's a, being a grandparent is an important job. Any other joys or testimonies? I'd like to thank everyone for their prayers um, for my knee surgery that I had. Um, everything went well. I'm recovering well, and I think I'm a little ahead of, ahead of schedule, so that's good. Yes. Knock on wood. Yeah, knock on wood. This is it. That's good. <laughs> Any other prayer concerns this morning? Any prayer concerns? Yeah. I want to look up my uh, friend Nicole. Um, please lift up in prayer my wife and her co-workers ever since Governor Hogan um, announced two days before the normal school year that schools could open she's been losing her mind because she does Frederick County Public Schools bus routing and all the routes were set for food delivery and everything like that and now it just all went out the window so she has worked every day since that <coughs> announcement minimum of 12 hours a day she has not had a day off. She is working today, and they are losing their minds. So just pray for peace and that things go right, and they can get the bus routing designed in a, in a reasonable amount of time. Mm -hmm. uh, for Bill, uh, Bill Casey's going in to have his... Uh, Mm -mm. Uh-oh, uh, what? Go ahead, go ahead. But, no, I don't know. He's having his esophagus. I he's know having. that. He, 
Go ahead, say it. He's having his esophagus get stretched on Tuesday. So just keep him lifted up in prayer. Um, just prayer for, prayers for my sister Megan. Um, prayers for guidance and, and healing. Uh, prayers for my good friend, um, Pastor Isbelino from Puerto Rico, the one that we've been going and having mission trips with. He had a small stroke. Um, so he's recovering, but um, and a lot of church late, you know, church members have been picking up the slack, uh, but um, he did have a slight stroke. What's his name again? Isbelino. Isbelino. Yeah. I S A B E L I N O. Is Belino. That is correct. I think about that one. Uh, my stepfather has got the gangrene in the one foot. to have mentioned last week about Tim for most of you. Um, Tim got hurt at, D at uh, Site R working with hazmat equipment and had the end of his finger smashed. So they took uh, the, she went to the emergency room. They didn't even give him Novocaine removed, his, but they got all of his nail. And then they turned around and stitched him up. But now he has to go see a surgeon because the base of his nail is growing inward, so he's got to go have that surgically removed. So he was just jealous Robin had all the attention and decided to do something to him. So. <laughs> they both have finger problems now. Yeah. So he's all man. Thank you, love. Thank you for sharing that. Anyone else? Our daughter, Lindsay, is applying to PA schools now, and she doesn't have the best grades, and she, um, she has 
uh, Idaho, someplace in Idaho that's looking at her. And I just pray that this is all in God's plan and his timing. I mean, he's going to make it one way or the other. So just, I'm not interested in seeing her going to Idaho. And I told her she's going to miss some kids. <laughs> Should be great deals on potatoes. She ought to have a lot of free flyer miles, or somebody will, anyway. Yeah. <laughs> chance or, or by accident, um, but we know that you are with us, Lord, and have watched over us many times and kept us from harm's way. We thank you for guiding us and leading us in the right direction, and sometimes we look at those things as, as just being a coincidence, but we know, Lord, that you are guiding us, and that we allow you to uh, intercede in our lives, Lord, that, that your will will be done. We thank you for that guidance that you've given us. The providence that, that works through our lives is because of you. Lord, we lift up our concerns this morning. Lord, we're glad that Tammy is with us this morning and we pray to continue healing with her knee and we ask for a full recovery. We're sad to learn that Nicole has indeed been diagnosed with cancer. We ask for the Holy Spirit to provide healing. We ask your Holy Spirit to work with the, with the physicians and the specialists so that they may uh, treat to the best of their ability. And we ask for the Holy Spirit for the physical healing that is needed. We pray for the pastor. Pastor is... Bellina. Is Bellina. Is Bellina, Lord, who suffered a stroke, Lord. We ask for Holy Spirit to provide the physical healing that is needed in his body. We thank you, Lord, for his witness. We thank you, Lord, for his ministry. And we ask that you will be with him to provide wholeness and healing in his body. Lord, we lift up Megan this morning, that your guidance will be upon her and lead her in, the, in whatever direction she should go, go in the same way with Lindsay that your guidance will be upon her, that she may make the correct decisions in her life to go the way that would be best for her and, and it would be in your plan. We pray for Bill, who is a procedure coming up. We pray that that goes well. Lord, we pray for all our, our, our youth that are going back to school, all the children that are going back. We ask that um, you're blessed. So whether they're going back physically or whether they're staying home and working online, Lord, we ask your Holy Spirit to be with them. But it's very, very difficult um, for teachers and um, administrators and, and, and bus drivers and um, the way things are today with this COVID-19. So we pray for Linda uh, Twig and um, Oh, Lisa. Lisa Trey. <laughs> I got it right. Lisa Trey, Lord. Uh, we pray for her and, and all the who work with the public school system. And we ask that you'll be with them in all these different trans transitions that they are making just on a, just on a dime. And uh, we pray that you'll be with them. We thank you for what they do for our children. We pray for Alice, who has experienced um, pain and discomfort, Lord. Uh, we pray that your Holy Spirit will give wisdom to the physicians to treat and diagnose, that there may be healing there. We pray for my stepfather, uh, Jimmy Jones, who has been diagnosed with gangrene in his right foot. We ask for your physical healing, and we pray that the antibiotics will be effective. 
We pray for both Tim and Robin. Both are suffering from injuries to their fingers. And we pray for complete healing for both of them. And we also pray that you keep them safe and out of harm's way. Lord, we lift up all these concerns and any concerns that I may have missed. We lift up to you any concerns that are on our hearts that have not been vocalized. We lift up to you at this time. Lord, we thank you for hearing our prayers. And Lord, we also lift up to you others. For Lois Fraley, who has shingles, uh, we pray for uh, that she may um, be well and back with us soon. For Angie Forrest, who has a GI infection, we pray for recovery and that she may be back with us soon as well. We lift up those to you and we ask for healing. We pray all these prayers in the name of Jesus Christ. Also, for uh, other names that have come to my mind, for Connie, who has had a stroke and is recovering, for John Stoudemire, who is recovering from his hip, and for Esther, uh, Jeff Hedd's sister, who has uh, terminal cancer. We ask for the Holy Spirit to be upon her. And for any others that I have missed. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ. You taught us to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, and thy kingdom come, and thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, Contemporary stuff, you know, some of the old things that a lot of times we don't get to sing, and so I, I enjoy that. So, anyway, uh, and real Christians sing loud. <laughs> <laughs> what a fellowship! What a
Jeff asked me to do music, and he's asked me several times, and I haven't been able to. And uh, this Sunday, I said, yeah, as a matter of fact, it all worked out, and I could do some music. And I haven't done music in a long time. I've taken a break from the Emmaus community, and the guitar hadn't been out of its case in some time. And uh, my fingers haven't been out of their comfort zone in a long time. So, anyway... But it's good to it's good to sing again, play the guitar a little again. It's, it's nice. <laughs>
the Jew would still on us the true purpose of gathering is the body of Christ. It's not for fellowship. It's not even for testimonies. It's not for anything. It's to worship you. It's to lift your name. It's to glorify you. It's to bring us the closer in relationship as the body of Christ gathers. So I ask now that you would bless Pastor Ken. I ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. chapter 18. The Gospel of Matthew, chapter 18, 21 to 35. And it's here we have the parable of the unmerciful servant. Matthew 18, 21 to 35. Then Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother or sister? who sins against me, up to seven times? Then Jesus answered, I tell you, not seven times, but seventy-seven times. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like a king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. As he began the settlement, a man who owned him 10,000 bags of gold was brought to him. Since he was not able to pay, the master ordered that he and his wife and his children and all that he had be sold to repay the debt. At this, the servant fell on his knees before him. Be patient with me, he begged, and I will pay you back everything. The servant's master took pity on him, canceled the debt, and let him go. But when that servant went out, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred silver coins. He grabbed him, began to choke him. Pay back what you owe me, he demanded. The fellow servant fell on his knees and begged him, be patient with me, and I will pay it back. But he refused. Instead, he went off and had the man thrown into prison until he could pay off the debt. When the other servants saw what had happened, they were outraged and went and told their master everything that had happened. Then the master called the servant in. You wicked servant, he said. I canceled all that debt of yours because you begged me to. Shouldn't I have had mercy on your fellow servant just as I had on you? In anger, his master handed him over to the jailers to be tortured until he should pay back all he had owed. This is how my heavenly Father will treat each of you unless you forgive your brother or sister from your heart. The word of God to the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us go to our Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. We ask that you are open our minds and our hearts to receive it and then apply it to our day-to-day -day lives. Help us to be forgiving servants, merciful servants. Help us to realize how much of a debt that you have forgiven. And Lord, I pray that the words of my mouth, the meditation of our hearts, be acceptable in thy sight, and either through me or in spite of me. May your words speak to your people. In the name of the risen Christ, I pray. Amen. In the next gospel lesson, Peter comes to Jesus. And he says, Lord, when my brother wrongs me, how often must I forgive him? Seven times? To which Jesus replies, No, not seven times. Say 70 times. 
Actually, some translations say 70 times 7 times. It's just Jesus saying that there's really no limit that needs to be placed on our willingness to forgive each other and show mercy to each other. God's kingdom is built on an, an endless mercy and endless forgiveness. And Jesus wants us to understand that forgiveness is really an attitude, an attitude of forgiveness. We don't go to say, well, this is your third time, or the seventh time I've forgiven you, or the 77th time I've forgiven you. I can't give you, forgive you anymore because I've reached my limit. And Jesus is saying, no, it doesn't work that way. Forgiveness is a way of life. And then Jesus goes on to tell a parable. He says, there was a certain king who was settling accounts with his servants. And they came in one by one. And there was a, king, there was a servant who owed the king 10,000 bags of gold. Now, for us, we could say over a million dollars. Well, it would be impossible for that servant to ever pay off that much money. He could work 100 years and not be able to pay off that much money. It didn't matter how hard he worked. It didn't matter how long he worked or how much overtime he worked. It just was not possible. He could never pay it off, no matter what he did. So the king was ready to throw the servant into prison. He fell on his knees and said, have patience with me, and I will repay you. Out of pity, the king forgave the entire amount of the debt. The servant was free now, didn't owe a penny. What a relief. He wasn't going to go to prison. He was free because of the goodness and the mercy and the grace of the king. He didn't owe a cent. Now, you would think that that act of forgiveness would change his entire outlook on life. Not so. The servant happened to run into a fellow servant who actually owed him a much smaller amount of money, 100 pieces of silver. Note the contrast. A huge amount of money that could never be paid off versus a small amount of money that maybe in a couple months could have easily been paid off. What does the servant do? He grabs his fellow servant by the throat and begins to choke him, demanding the money to be paid off immediately. His fellow servant says the exact same words that he said when he was in that situation. Have patience with me, I will repay you. He was unmoved, unmoved by those words. So he threw him into prison. Well, when this word got around, what happened? Word eventually got back to the king. And the king called the servant in a second time. And he said, you wicked servant. I forgave you a tremendous debt. And you showed no mercy on your fellow servant. Because he was unwilling to forgive his fellow servant. He was thrown into prison and demanded to work hard labor for the rest of his life. The moral of this story is actually a spiritual one, and it's this. We forgive each other because God has forgiven us. Amen. You know, it's funny when you, when you think about it. Jewish law said you were supposed to forgive somebody three times. That was what people talked back in Jesus' day that you were supposed to give your forgive your brother or sister three times, and after that, you didn't have to forgive them anymore. So, when, when Peter talks to Jesus, he's thinking, look, Jesus, I'm doing better. I'm doing better than, than what people are saying, what, what we're being taught. I'm saying, should I forgive my brother or sister seven times? That's more than twice what's required. So I'm, I'm thinking Peter was thinking pretty good about himself. He was thinking, well, I'm being extremely generous, and, and Jesus is going to compliment me. No, that's not 
Jesus saying, no, 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 it, it doesn't work that way, Peter. And what he does, he turns the tables and makes Peter realize that how God deals with us and makes him look at it from that perspective. For the king in this story is, we all know, it's God. The king is God. And the, the servant that has such a large debt that can never be repaid, well, that's us. That's me and you. And the second service that comes and asks our forgiveness, that's our brother and sister. That's the spiritual meaning of this story. So the, the situation is that there is a perfect and just God who created us in this world that we live in that one day we will give account to. And God's judgment is final. Final. There's no appeal to God's judgment. And all of us have to stand before God, our judge. And we will be judged by what we have done through Christ and Jesus Christ. We have decided for Christ or we decided against Christ. We will be judged. I think one of the reasons we as human beings have such a hard time forgiving is because we have been taught to forgive and forget. Forgive and forget. But you notice here in this parable, that's not what Jesus is saying at all. Not forgive and forget. He's saying to remember that you have been forgiven a tremendous debt, therefore you forgive others in return. It's never easy. When we forgive somebody and we put our hand and, and go to shake their hands to be our friend, it doesn't take away the hurt. It doesn't deny the past. But it does create a new future. We're supposed to remember the debt that we have been forgiven so we can forgive our brothers and sisters. Still, forgiveness is hard. It's very hard. You know, as, as a pastor, I have people occasionally ask me, well, why should I ever forgive her for what she's done to me? Or why should I ever forgive him for what he's done to me? It's not easy. But Jesus is calling us to do it regardless. Because we've been forgiven a debt that we could never, ever repay through the cross of Jesus Christ who shed his blood for us. There's another obstacle for us in forgiving, and that obstacle is because sometimes the person not forgiving could care less. Sometimes there's no repentance at all. They could care less whether we forgive them or not. There's no change of heart. It's hard to forgive someone who could care less, who doesn't care if they're forgiven or not. Who doesn't even understand that they need to be forgiven. But again, Jesus switches the perspective and makes us not look at it so much as we forgiving each other as brothers and sisters, but look at it as, as the perspective of God, God's perspective concerning us, that how we stand before God, and how we stand before God is sinners. We are all stand as sinners before God. We all fall short. We all have debts that can never be repaid. But God has given us grace as a gift of forgiveness and new life. We all have to see ourselves in relationship to God, and that helps us see ourselves and why we should forgive each other. Forgiveness, though, does not, it does not deny the past. It creates a new future. To forgive means that we remember God's mercy upon us. And that's the point of today's parable. We've been forgiven a tremendous debt, so we forgive each other. The greedy person whose debt had been erased was punished, punished for failing to remember. Failing to remember the mercy that was shown upon him. Also, when we refuse to forgive someone, it hurts us. It takes a toll on us mentally, physically, 
most of all spiritually. Because spiritual healing can take place when we actually forgive a brother or sister. Christ was crucified so we can spend eternity in heaven. That also means Christ was crucified so we do not have to spend eternity in hell. Christ gave his life so our sins could be forgiven and if we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we will spend eternity in heaven. Christ has forgiven us, the King of Kings, so in return, we forgive others. Amen. At this time, we're going to pass out communion, I believe. Son Jesus Christ took his disciples to the upper room and seated them around the table. He took bread and gave thanks and broke it and said, Take, eat. This is my body broken for you. Eat of it as often as you will, in remembrance of me. And when the supper is over, he took the cup and after giving thanks, he gave the cup to the disciples and said, Take, drink, all of you. This is my blood poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Drink of it as often as you will in remembrance of me. So we eat the bread and drink of the cup. Remember your life, death, and resurrection. We look forward to the coming again. Make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one with Christians around the globe until we come together at your heavenly banquet. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. The body of Christ broken for you. Take, eat, and be thankful. Lord, we thank you for the bread and the cup we've just received. May they be the body and blood of Christ to renew our faith. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen.
close the service. We're going to sing Amazing Grace traditionally. And uh, we'll do the first three verses and the sixth verse. I think you've got four in your string out, don't you? Okay. One thing I'm going to comment on, um, Pastor Ken and Sherman, you know, one thing that has always, always convicted me is when we say the Lord's Prayer, and I say, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And I've realized how much trouble I'm in. <laughs> that's, that's a serious, serious thing. Yeah. 